next guest is a hilarious actress, writer, and comedian who never fails to brighten our day. Please welcome back Coco Brown. Hey, hey everybody! Hey, 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 everybody! It's so good to see, see you. you. So where, good to see you, you guys too. Hey, Lonnie. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Y'all look so good. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. you. Where thank are you? you? I'm home. I'm home. I'm actually in my office right now, hoping my kid doesn't walk in and make a lot of noise. <laughs> oh, I love That's it. Right. Every parent can relate to that. So, Coco, you just started doing stand-up comedy again. So, I have to ask you, what has it been like to be back in the clubs during the pandemic? I mean, it, it's like coming home. It's just very different now because what we know, Lonnie and I would consider a sellout now is half the room. So when you're yes. seeing empty tables and chairs, you're actually like, yeah, okay, those tables don't count. So <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, it's like literally like That's six you know, feet. having to social distance and you know have it only half capacity or two thirds or whatever. But I mean, yeah. I'm just happy to be back on stage. You know, I, I, I missed it. I missed it so. And doing virtual shows are cool and all, but I need that interaction. I need to hear that laugh. Yeah. Yes. And you know what? I'm sure the audience is ready to laugh again. We certainly are. How has it been performing stand up? I mean, like, how has it helped you in the past? Oh, my God. It, it's gotten me through so much. Comedy is my therapist. You know, why some people uh. are paying $500 an hour to lay on a couch, I touch a microphone and get paid for it. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it got me through my divorce. It's gotten me through a lot of things. I mean, just, you know, life itself. Even, you know, like I said, even doing the virtual shows, being able to just go on a show on, on a Zoom and vent, you know, it's my therapy. Mm. It's what gets me through. I need it. Lord knows sure. I do. <laughs> Absolutely. So many th things have changed in the last year. Another thing would be dating. So can I ask, how has your dating life been over the past year? <laughs> Non-existent? Ah. Um, look. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard. it was hard enough when you're dealing with, you know, trying to go out with people. But now you're, like, really stepping up the ante and saying, okay, you got to FaceTime me. I got to see you in your right, element, right. and I have to watch your facial expressions. You can't just text me and expect me to figure out what you mean in 38 characters or less. I got to look at you. And, um, <laughs> you know, that's when you really get to see people, you know, up close and personal on a FaceTime. Yeah. I mean, I noticed guys that I had been talking to didn't have any side teeth. I said, I didn't know you were missing all your molars, you know, so, <laughs> so, so I mean, it's been, a, it's been a little difficult Keep to say the real. least, but it's making you have to get to know people. You can't just yeah. rely on instant, you know, instant chemistry. You have to get to know someone now. You know, sure. it's all about putting yourself first. And speaking of putting yourself first, you recently tweeted, I am trying really hard not to be petty. So Coco, <laughs> when was yeah. the last time since you were petty? You know, it was it was about a month ago. I, I'm trying really hard, but it, it was okay. So there was a guy that I was talking to that I knew from high school, and he okay. didn't know that you know I was still in touch with other people from high school. And I found out that he was also talking to two other women from high school. And so basically, I kind of strung him along for like months, thinking he had a shot. When all along, I knew I was never gonna give him a, a, a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got gifts and stuff and, you know, um, oh. you know and then one oh. day I just stopped returning his calls. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I, righty then. I, I, I ain't no rotation. I don't play for the okay. NBA. You ain't putting me on no bench. <laughs> Let him know. Let him know, sis. I, that is hysterical. Did yes. you let the other ladies know, too? Oh, we all knew. We were all in on it, honey. We was all comparing all the gifts. All in on it. Mm -hmm. All Group right, what came from this? An organization. <laughs> exactly. Right, not right, only right. is I mean, she is she yeah. scheming, not only is she scheming <laughs> with the ladies, but also you are on the show. 911. We gotta talk about this. Yeah. But you have also been cast in the new 50 Cent drama Black Mafia Family, Family. making yeah. it your third yeah, this is your third series that you're gonna be on air this year. I'm Along telling you, with I've the become series, the pop -up never have queen. I ever. Yeah, I'm That's reoccurring amazing. on like three shows. Thank you. I'm reoccurring That's on like so three good. shows right now. And it's wonderful. It's like, you know, and I and I'm 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 a different character in every show, you know, like 
Never have I ever, I'm playing my mother. My mother was an educator for 35 years. I am literally being my mom. And then in BMF, <laughs> I'm completely different where I'm playing this like hardcore character that don't take no mess. And then, you know, yeah. in, in, in 911, I get to be this caretaker, very sweet, very loving, very compassionate. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's keeping me on my toes. I said, I'm becoming like the pop-up queen. If you got a show, I'm a pop-up on it. That's what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you are <laughs> popping up on our show. Has, okay. Do you feel like it's been a good distraction for everything that's been going on in the world for the past year? Do you feel like having all these projects to work on, has it been a good distraction for you? Absolutely, absolutely. It's funny how when comedy shut down, even, you know, the industry, the TV and film industry, what popped up first was the TV and film industry. While the comedy clubs were still shut down, I, I was doing yep. independent films and web series. Amazing. I was working. So, I mean, it kept me busy and kept me on my toes, you know, kept that iron sharp. So when opportunities like Black Mafia Family and Never Have Ever 911 popped back up, you know, my noodle was, I was ready, honey. I was ready because I had been working. Working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. working, working, working. Yeah, okay, exactly. let's talk about 911. You play the caregiver to Christopher, a young boy with cerebral palsy, played by Gavin McHugh. Now, do you yeah. feel particularly motherly on the set? Because I don't know, I feel like you would be cracking up all the time. You know, that little boy just is my heartbeat. I, 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 you know, I'm at that age now that I am auntie, I am mother. You know, I get hit with dudes saying, hello, ma'am. You know, Miss Ma'am, <laughs> Miss Lady. You know, I'm at that age now. I don't get the hey booze anymore. I get the excuse me, ma'am, Miss Ma'am. So I mean, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in that you know realm where I'm, I'm I'm motherly, just a maternal period. I'm a mom, you know. But with him, it's like when we're on set, I do find myself being very motherly to him. Um, it's too cute because, you know, he tends to pick up things that I say. So whenever I would greet him, I'd be like, hey, baby, hey, baby. And then his father told me one day when we came back to film, he said, we cannot get him to stop saying, hey, baby, to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that is hysterical. Uh, I'm oh, sure. I mean, have you learned? Funny, but that's my baby. I just adore him. He's the sweetest child. Oh. Have you learned anything from working with him? I'm sure Absolutely. he's learned a lot from you. Oh, honey, to not sweat the small stuff. That child has one of those attitudes that, you know, I can do anything. Um, nothing's going to bother me. I've never seen him upset no. or cry or anything. And so I may come in there in a, in a funky mood and I get around Gavin and I'm like, what is wrong with me? Let me stop. Let me, you know, I'm tripping. Oh. <laughs> you know, so so he, keep, he keeps, he keeps Miss Coco in check. Please believe that. Oh, <laughs> so sweet. Well, now yeah. we got to see a look at you in 911. People who love each other are always connected by an invisible string made of love. Carla, do you have an invisible string? You know I do. And it's connected right to you. Even if I can't see? You can see me anytime you want on the computer. See, me and you, we're connected. No matter what. <laughs> oh my now gosh. you say that one of your goals is to win a Pulitzer Prize one day. Are yes. you writing something that we should know about? I am writing my memoir as we speak. Um, I'm working oh, with an amazing black female publishing company. Um, and we're writing my memoir. And it has been a journey because I've had to really dig in the crates and peel back some, mm. some scars and some wounds that I had buried deep inside. And um, just to wow. be honest and genuine, authentic, you know, transparent. But it's been so healing at the same time. So I'm really excited for people to, to see this book, you know, to, to read this book because I'm purging it all. You know, I've even sat my parents down and said, look, it's gonna be some stuff in this book that I ain't tell you, but you know, oh. you know I'm making up a lot of this, you know. <laughs> it's awesome. okay. I get you. Any, you I get deserve you. everything that you have. You work so hard. I'm so proud Thank of you. you. I know Thank your you. story. Thank so you. once everybody hears it, it's gonna be encouraging and inspiring. We're gonna thank look you. out for it, okay? Thank you, Larry. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Coco, thank you, thank you, thank you for thank stopping and chatting with me. us today. Yes. We love it when you stop by. You can catch 911 Mondays at 8 p.m. on Fox.